Yeah. Hey. I'm about to kill this. <laughs> Best man speech. <laughs> Good evening, family and friends. It is my pleasure to be in such great company. All here to celebrate this beautiful occasion. Before I begin, I'd first like to give credit where I feel credit is due. Ruben and Aida Nunez and Carol Capuz, please stand to be recognized. Without your love, support, sacrifice, and guidance, we would not be here today. Not only do we celebrate your children entering a lifelong commitment, we also celebrate your lifelong commitment you made with your children so long ago. So let me be the first to say congratulations on the job well done. Now, can we all agree? I have never seen you as beautiful and as lovely as you are today. You are truly glowing. Can we all give it up? <laughs> and Monique, you look pretty good too. <laughs> My name is Jeffrey Salmons, and I was lucky enough to be chosen as Caboose's best man. It was a tight race. I campaigned heavily, and after deliberation, I was able to edge out the competition. And what an honor it is to be the best man. So thank you, Brian, for making an excellent choice. <laughs> I feel quite a bit of pressure, as you guys can imagine, being the best man. Brian, if you think about it, out of everyone Brian knows, I'm the best man. <laughs> So, I'm kind of relishing this moment, right? I mean, how often could I stand in front of 150 people and say, I'm the best man here? <laughs> you know, when someone says, hey, you're the best man, I'm not going to just tell them they're wrong. <laughs> and for all of you that disagree, you can blame Brian. <laughs> so, Brian and I have been besties for like seven to eight years. And I like to think I know Brian pretty well. Sure, you all have an impression of Brian, but as the best man here, I feel it's my responsibility to share things about Brian you may not know. <laughs> Brian, you nervous yet? Yes. <laughs> Number one, Brian is without question the biggest mama's boy you will ever meet. <laughs> If you truly know Brian, then you know how much he loves his mom. Yeah. And God bless you, Carol, because it must take a human, superhuman strength to raise a boy to this man in front of us today. <laughs> Number two, Brian is extremely private. He doesn't let too many people into his circle. He has a very small family, an even smaller group of friends. Number three, Brian is without question extremely stubborn. He usually makes up his mind pretty quick, and you can pretty much forget about it because he's not changing his mind. Page two. <laughs> These three things I've come to admire about Brian. Some may take them as potential weaknesses, but I see them as strengths. So when Monique, so when I met Monique a few years ago, I thought to myself, "Wow, Brian must really care about this girl." With him being so private, he's introducing this girl to his friends. I thought Monique was very pretty, very kind, and very genuine. So naturally, I was happy for my friend. So as days turned to weeks, weeks turned to months, and then months turned to years, I thought to myself, wow, Brian must really love this girl. With him being so stubborn, no relationship would last without compromise. <laughs> So someone might ask me, hey, best man, what, 
<laughs> when do you think they would take their relationship to the next level? And I would say, hey, average man. <laughs> Great question. And it was when I went to Monique's family softball game. There I met Monique's parents, her sister, and her brother. Right there, it confirmed to me that Monique was as genuine as I thought her to be. There at the game, I saw a different Brian. A very open, a very funny, a very charismatic Brian. And I thought to myself, wow, Brian really likes this family. Because this is no longer the private Brian I want to know. As we were about to play softball, right then I thought to myself, wow, Brian must really, really like this family. He hates softball. <laughs> But again, this is not the stubborn Brian I once knew. Later, when we were playing at the park, I saw something in Brian I had never seen before. I saw him laughing, I saw him playing, I saw him hugging, spinning and throwing, Sydney in the air. And I thought to myself, wow, Brian really loved this man. Private Brian and stubborn Brian was gone. Two sayings come to mind. Love makes you do crazy things. And behind every strong man is a strong woman. And as the best man here, I do believe these two to be true. Brian, the love you have for Monique changed you for the best. And you found that strong woman by your side. You're no longer as pri private as I thought. You let all these beautiful people into your life. You're no longer as stubborn as I thought you were. You were able to change. <laughs> Meet in the middle and to compromise. But one thing's for certain, you're still every bit of that mama's boy. <laughs> say it's the hardest thing to do. It's love. Love and love more. There is no shortage of love in a marriage, and there is no shortage of love in a family. Love unconditionally, love with no strings attached. Love until you feel as if you cannot love anymore, and then love more. Love, love, love. Before I conclude my best man's speech, <laughs> I got a confession to make. I am not who I claim to be. I'm sorry, Brian. I can't do it. I can no longer go on with this best man's speech. Drinking out of my best man's flask. <laughs> or even wearing these best man underwear. <laughs> I stand before you a very honest man, a very simple man, but I think everyone here can agree, Monique married the best man here. Aww. I'd like everyone to raise your glass. Here, here is to forever. Family is forever. May these bonds of friendship be forever. May the beautiful memory of today last forever, and may your love for each other last forever. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, everybody, that was Jeff. Give him a round of applause. Great speech, great speech.